football fans, and welcome to The Onside Kick. My name is Ricky Widmer, and as always, I'm joined by Dave Oster. Hey, guys. And back from his vacay, Mark Weber. Hey, guys. It's nice to be back in Chicago. And so I can't we, say hey, guys. I say <laughs> hey, guys. We finally figured out, though, that uh, you guys aren't one person. You guys are in the same room True for the story. first time. Well, we haven't talked at the same time yet. You guys will talk at the same time at some point or during this we? podcast. Or won't we? Can't be sure. You guys did. Hey, you guys did talk at the same time because Dave said, "Hey, hey, guys, is my thing." So there, gotcha, Mark. I don't know. We'll have to check the tape. We'll have to check the tape. But this week, big, n- not really news story because we're sitting in uh, Dave, like we said last week, kind of an off period we're, for the we're football in the NFL season. Drought. And this week, Brandon Marshall of your guys' beloved Chicago Bears came out this week with a tweet, and he said. I love this new category at Roddy White TV. Let's make a friendly bet. You need to redeem your betting reputation. And he posted an article to Pro Football Talk that talked about Julio Jones and Roddy White being the best wide receiver tandem in the NFL. And this goes back even, guys, beginning of June, Brandon Marshall was actually called the best wide receiver tandem with Alshon Jeffrey when Alshon came out and said, yeah, we're the best. So who is it? Who's the best wide receiver tandem? Roddy White and Julio, Marshall or Jeffrey? No, it's obviously uh, Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey. To be fair, there still needs to be some time for Alshon Jeffrey to play a little bit more. Uh, He's a young guy. But without a doubt, that is phenomenal. I mean, they've got tons of height, tons of potential, freak catch abilities, catch in traffic, They've got everything you could possibly want. Yeah, no, they're they're the ideal wide receivers, and I think it's it, it's almost uh, funny how it goes from well, you know, we've got these gigantic wide receivers, to now everybody's like, oh, well, we need corners that are six four now. It they pretty much changed the way defenses play because of their impact. Well, and just to kind of go back, kind of put this in a because last season, obviously for Julio Jones and Roddy White, it wasn't a career season for them. It wasn't very productive. No, did they play? Did they who, even bother to play? Julio Jones got injured and he missed to a ton salsa of games. Dancing. No, that's Victor Cruz, Dave. Victor yeah, Cruz salsa yeah. dances. But to put this into context with what Roddy White and Julio Jones were able to do in Julio's first season, 2011, Julio played 13 games, 54 catches, 959 yards, 8 touchdowns. Whereas Roddy White in that season had 16 games, 100 receptions on 181 targets, over 1,000 yards, almost got to 1,300, eight touchdowns. So I think what we have here for this season, it's going to be a race to see which uh, duo is going to get both of them over 1,000 yards first. I think that's what decides this, right? Well, I mean, uh, both, Brandon Mar- everything. both Brandon Marshall and Alshon did that, though, last year. Definitely. Pretty easily, Yeah, might I add. With two quarterbacks. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Actually, the second quarterback really helped out (laughs) because Alshon wouldn't have got targets had Cutler been the quarterback the entire season. Well, Jay didn't really know that uh, that Alshon was on the field. He wasn't really sure. He only saw one number on the back of a jersey. Yeah. Well, I mean, Alshon did. I'm looking at his game by game stats 42 against Cincy, had 11 yards on one reception against Minnesota, 51 against Pittsburgh, then against Detroit. Boom, 107. Yeah. Well, when Alshon Jeffrey, uh, you know, had his homecoming on the field here, that's that's when it got big. Like everyone saw him just be the freak athlete that he is and mm-hmm. went, Oh, this is gonna be something good. This is something to be excited about. I think it's funny that you boom on the 107 one the very next game against New Orleans he put up two eighteen. No, but I'm saying the That's the boom. Yeah, but the 107 was, it was like a little boom I'm here. and then big boom. Yeah, but the 107 is like I think the two eighteen was like the I'm here. I mean, five receptions for 107, 10 receptions, 20, or 118. 218. 218. Yeah. They're close. They're around 21 yards per catch. But, I mean, what about the bigger boom when he had 249 against the Vikings in an overtime loss? Yeah, that was a sad game, too. That was a great game. I don't know what you're talking about. That was a great game for me. But, yeah, I mean, comparing these two, uh, obviously it's it's an interesting comparison because uh, Matt Ryan and Jay Cutler almost fit into similar situations to where they are both pretty great quarterbacks, both have good arms and everything, but neither one of them have 
quote unquote gotten it done yet. Yeah. Uh, and I think people would kind of put Matt Ryan above Jay Cutler more often, only, especially because he's on the field more yeah, often. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Only because Jay Cutler is on the sideline because the Bears' offensive line gets him injured. Yeah, they like to do that. Uh, uh, not just the O-line. His decision-making at times is um, questionable at best. It's tough to make decisions when, oh, uh, everyone's coming at me. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's true. Man. But, I mean, last season we can all kind of – I think we can all agree that – Alshon Marshall, best wide receiver tandem for 2013. It would be very hard to argue. But this season, this is a new season. Roddy White's going to be back and healthy, hopefully. Julio Jones is going to be healthy. You guys being the Bears fans, are Roddy White, Julio Jones, do they have, give me a chance, a percentage that they challenge Marshall and Jeffrey for that top spot tandem again in the NFL this season. Well, we lost our primary quarterback in the offseason. As you know, he took a trip down to uh, Tampa Bay. Took so his talents to South Beach? Nearly South Beach. Um, <laughs> so I'm a little concerned. But, no, I, I don't think it's going to happen. I think the Bears, uh, we've got the quarterback whisperer out there. We, we've improved our team so much this offseason. I feel like the, the uh, Atlanta Falcons are just hoping that everybody will come back healthy. The Bears, on the other hand, went out and, you know, Added some nice additions around the field. Hopefully the offense will be on the field a little more now that we buffed up that defense. So I, I'm definitely leaning heavily towards the Bears. But on the other hand, you got to be like, well, Atlanta can't be nearly as terrible as they were last year. It's statistically impossible. Yeah, and, they, and for Atlanta, they definitely are going to want to make a big splash right now. But for the Bears, the one thing I will say um, that's going to work against them I think Jay Cutler kind of figured out, okay, I do have to pass the ball around. Because after Mm -hmm. McCown came in and then uh, Jay was back in there, he still spread the ball out a little bit, not to the McCown level, um, but he was spreading it out a bit. So I think he realizes that uh, Matt Forte is also looking to have a big season this year, having yet another because he's the most kind of underappreciated running back in the NFL. You actually mentioned there are two players, one Falcon and – one bear that are going to be the most crucial for which wide receiver tandem wins best of 2014. For the Bears, it's Matt Forte. For the Falcons, it's Steven Jackson. Steven Jackson got no legs on And the reason why is last season, Forte ran for just over 1,300 yards, had nine 20 plus carries, nine touchdowns, only fumbled twice. In 2011, that first season with Jones and White, Michael the Burner Turner. Oh, look at that. Just over 1,300 yards, 11 plus 20 carries, 11 touchdowns, three fumbles. Very similar numbers. Definitely. Different running back now. Uh, but and an I'm older talking, running back. I'm talking well. numbers, though. Yeah. The numbers are very similar. Sure, but when but we're talking about a different player. So when it comes to 2014 season, yeah, but the run, I'm we saying, can't be sure. I'm saying the run game is going to help these wide receivers, and it has to. If the yeah, run say, game what, exists. What did Steven Jackson put up last year, though? Steven Jackson had 543 yards on 157 carries, three Carries over 20 yards, six yeah. touchdowns, zero fumbles. And, and and a staggering 3.5 yards per carry. That is a running back who has seen better days. He was abused in St. Louis. He's just got no legs left. Unless he roids up or something, I, I can't see him having a big turnaround season. He's getting up there in age, and as we know, running backs don't come back from that. Definitely. So, I mean, it's a tough one. I think, honestly, um, you kind of have to expect that the Bears have the better duo here and are going to in 2014. Even you know having uh, uh, Marquise Wilson playing as well might diminish a little bit, but I say it, it really does depend on mm-hmm. how much uh, Trestman pounds into Cutler's head that Marshall's not the only wide receiver. You need to pass the ball around, um, and like you said, it, he was getting better at the end of the season after uh, taking some notes. But it, it's going to be a very, very productive season for these Bears wide receivers, Falcons. I think they're. I think actually, all four of these guys are going to cap a thousand yards. To be honest, you with think you. so? Do you I think do. Julio Jones and Roddy White come back from their injury ridden yes. seasons? I honestly think it's going to be a ridiculous season. They, okay, you're, because you're going Juli- to play on turf multiple because I, times a year. Though. I know Julio Jones has only had three years in the NFL, but he's only had one a thousand plus season. Okay. Well, again, they're they're playing on turf multiple games during the season. Mm-hmm. 
Their their schedule, defense, or their opposing schedule as far as defenses go. And you're talking there's going to be some opportunities. Yes. I think Chicago does it regardless. I think uh, Atlanta is the one I was – because you're saying, you know, coming off injuries, here's the top a bad de- season. Here's the top defenses that they have to play this year. Obviously, they have to play the Saints twice. Not a top defense. Got to play – we're actually going to see only in these the four Dome, wide really. receivers suit up in one game week six in the Georgia Dome. That offense. We're going to see – and that to me, maybe that game – it, of course, the entire season is going to be what's but looked at. But that's a showdown. But that's going to be like, it's okay, be Marshall, you made the bet. Let's pony up. And I think uh, that's going to be a fun game. I hope that we have Brandon Marshall mic'd on that game. Oh that's going to be a fun game. Well, it's a, a it's a noon Central Time Fox game. No reason game. why I can't have a mic. Exactly. Do they, do they mic up the Fox games? Yeah, they, yeah, they do. That's what, Then they get their fun little, uh, these were the mic players saying stupid stuff. Oh, true. I mean, come on. Those, those guys all on turf. Yeah. But like the yeah, pr- ridiculous numbers. But like other than good. other than that, the only big de- like Green Bay, they don't have a huge. No, I would say don't. huge event. Depending on what the Ravens are going to do defensively this year, but they not, got a lot of reloading to do. Not too bad of defenses. The only uh, wild card I'm putting out there is what is Lovey going to do in Tampa? And they got to right. play them twice. Exactly. So besides so that, it's the like question you mark said. in Tampa, who lost their top corner this off season? I mean, that's come on. So they they got a lot. A lot easier scheduled this year as far as the defense. Compared the to the Bears, scale. who have to go up against San Francisco. They have to go up against, what, you're pointing to? New York, New York, yeah. the Jets? Say I, what you will, but I Rex compl- Ryan knows how to run a defense. I'm completely overlooking the Jets this season, I'll say it. No, Rex Ryan knows how to run a defense. Overlooking It them. doesn't matter what he has there. They just seem to work. They, they do like playing for Rex Ryan. I will say that. The team likes playing for him, and they play over their ability. More often than not, but of course that's not saying too much. No. Let me ask you this question, and I ask it because the Bears have to see them once, Falcons have to see them twice. Is Carolina a quality defense to go up against these two sets of wide receivers? I think they can be. Um, I don't think anything is set because Carolina's kind of lost you know, some pieces, uh, and they didn't really do that much to kind of revitalize the team. But they definitely can still be a formidable defense. The biggest problem for Carolina is that the offense probably won't be able to keep up. Absolutely the same thoughts with you on that one. And this is how I see it, and I want you guys to kind of tell me what you guys think. I feel like the Panthers to the Falcons are going to be the same thing as Detroit to the Bears. Really? Because as we saw last season, it's whichever one of these two teams— defensively can play this wide receiver tandem the hardest. Whoever can hold them to the fewest yards is going to help the other one. So, like, Carolina can either help the Bears or Detroit can either help the Falcons be the best wide receiver tandem. So, you know what? I'll wildcard you right here. I'll say Detroit has a chance to have 2,000-yard wide receivers too. Really? Yeah, I, I really think Golden Tate's undervalued. Uh, he's a pretty good wide receiver. So he's going to step in and be the number two. I think the they're going to finally find that number two wide receiver. He's going to be the Robin Here's to the thing, uh, though. Megatron's when Batman. When you have a Hail Mary, who do you throw it to? Golden Tate or Megatron? Well, even who if you throw it to Megatron, to? I think Golden Tate will come down with it, and the rest would agree. We can only hope. We really can only hope. But no, if you look at Golden Tate's numbers, it, not a massively passing offense, obviously, in Seattle last year. Very, very good numbers, though, for the uh, as far as very few drops and catchable balls. It was really, really good. I, I just think that people obviously remember him for the uh, touchception, and that's about it. He's a productive wide receiver, and I think Matt Stafford's going to fling it around because that's just what he does. And the only thing that concerns me there is the fact that they've got three big tight ends. And a very good running back coming out of the backfield with great hands. I'm going to take your... They they might just have too many options for him to hit the 1,000 mark. I'm going to take your Megatron and Golden Tate. Yeah. And I'm not saying that this wide receiver tandem is going to be better than the three we've mentioned, but I'm going to put them out there for a... Put them on the spotlight to at least watch them. Cordella Patterson and uh, Greg Jennings. No. No. You have no quarterback. You, if you don't have a quarterback, you can't have a thousand. Teddy Bridgewater. Yards. There, I'm throwing it out there. Wow, 
Teddy well, Bridgewater. Gonna, the answer is still put no. Teddy Bridgewater at the same category as uh, guys like Matt Ryan. No, no, no. I'm not saying. Matt Stafford. No, yeah. no, no. Jake I, I'm not saying I'm putting them like okay, they're going to be just as good. I said put them on the watch to do something this year better than they did last year. Uh, no. I think. Hey, I think uh, Adrian Peterson can get two thousand yards, but uh, I mean, hey, <laughs> not sure about the receiving. We core. have the <laughs> Adrian Peterson versus the combined receiving core of the Minnesota Vikings. It's gonna be fun. It's Who wins fun. in total yards? Now, I will say when we're talking about these, I think a, a, a wide receiving duo that kind of gets uh, overlooked because of the other assets on this team is going to be the Denver Broncos. Really, Denver? Because, because the thing for it's, the Denver Broncos, what about the is Cardinals? Peyton Manning has everybody to throw it to. That's it. So what, like, a, what about Larry Fitzgerald and Michael Floyd? No. But see, the thing for them is a that defense is fantastic. That's what we care so about. They're there. overshadowed. But also, Carson Palmer is not. He doesn't have everything left, so he can't get the most out of that duo. And they don't have that Matt Forte, that Michael the Burner Turner type They've running back. Good... Ellington's not a thirteen hundred rusher, no, Dave. But but he'll get you nine. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying that like. That a thousand yard rusher. That's Ooh. what teams need to be the best wide receiver tandem. They I think need as long a running as have a legit game. threat in the run game. I think yeah, Ellington's I, going I would, to be there you know this what? year. I'm going to take Matt Forte over Ellington. Whoa, well, whoa, who whoa! Holds the horses here. Are you saying that Matt Forte, the, the the number two running back in the NFL, is better than Ellington? Maybe the number three. Would you write back. that on paper? Maybe the number three running back. I got to put Lashady McCoy and AP above him. I think Your it's a- AP, Lashady McCoy right there. And I think as far as complete package, Forte. Forte beats uh, Adrian Peterson. I think Peterson's the better runner. But I think Forte's a better uh, just whole package of running backness. Nah, running backness, yeah. It's yep. AP. It's a- the top two that Adrian are in their Pearson. own category. And then Matt Forte is right there, right at the top of everyone else. I got, I got McCoy and then uh You got McCoy. Boy Forte. You just have McCoy at the top spot because you're a Bears fan, I feel like. Why? I just I'm feeling a little. Like it's hate. McCoy, Forte, and then Peterson, and purely because as a whole running back, if you're talking about purely gaining yards, then then okay, I'll give you Peterson's the better runner. Right, he can AP can be a receiver out of the backfield. It's it's not they can't be. We haven't seen him used as such yet. They don't really take enough advantage of him out of the backfield. I feel because it's like, well, he can either, you know, catch the ball for like four yards on a swing pass or he can run and bust one off. Yeah, it but also you like... got to think that we've had Leslie Frazier and Again. Brad Childress as our yeah. head coach. I will say one thing in defense of Dave's point here. Matt Forte was the second wide receiver for the Chicago Bears for a while. <laughs> for, for about half a decade. Yeah, he, until he's you number got, two. Until you got Alshon and Cutler was like, oh, wait, Alshon's there. Yeah, there's really nothing that Forte can't do is my point. And I think... Mm-hmm. That's... And consistently does it. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about Matt Forte. He's not the super flashy guy, but he consistently is great. Yep. And people kind of kind of forget about it. But when it comes to just these duos, uh, I can't see anybody being better than Chicago Bears uh, no. duo for this. And back to your point about Denver, I mean, it, it is kind of such a weird situation because it's like, okay, well, everybody there gonna, is going to have stupid numbers. You just have to accept that. But does that mean that they're truly better wide receivers than the other guys? They do have Peyton Manning out there throwing it to That's kind of like having a cheat code. Let me give you two more. Two more tandems for this season. Get your thoughts. All right. San Francisco, Crabtree Bolden with Stevie Johnson at the three. I'll just say Crabtree. Crabtree. Or we have Reggie Wayne and Hakeem Nix now in Indianapolis. I mean, it's a good combination, actually. I, I like it. Um, but the thing is, Reggie that... Wayne. Uh-huh. No, go ahead. Sorry, Reggie Wayne for me is obviously at the end of his career. Hakeem Nix has been good for New York, but never you know one of the best things out there. So it's an interesting combination where if Reggie Wayne was a little bit younger, I think we would have a very similar situation to you know. I think it's glory interesting days uh, in that, that you're going to Reggie Wayne, Hakeem Nix over uh, T.Y. T.Y. Well, Your I boy. mean, if you're going to take actually. Reggie yeah, Wayne I, out of there, put T.Y. T.Y. Nix. I'm I not would, saying that they're the best. Well, I'm just throwing mm, out that I think you can go with ones. Reggie Wayne and T.Y. T.Y. Instead. But I just, I don't know. I think, honestly, T.Y. Hilton and uh, Hakeem Nix for me are basically at the same Interchangeable? Spot. Yeah. And I mean, really looking me. at last year, this tandem, oh, it's kind of hard to think of a tandem Again. when you think of the New Orleans Saints because Drew Brees Jimmy will Graham. throw it to anybody. Jimmy Graham. But not just Jimmy Graham. Marquise Colston, what he's done with the Saints, and then what last year, what Kenny Stills was able to do. 
Tiny Stills really opened some eyes last year. His speed is just off the charts. Good hands. Uh, he tracks the ball really well. But, I mean, that same category for me is, you know, when we're talking Tur- about the Tur- Tur- is a cheat code, too? Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's what it is. And the thing, uh, you know, put two wide receivers on the uh, New England Patriots, let them stay there for four years, and Tom Brady will make them look like a great duo, I'll too. I say, Tom Brady had Randy Moss for one season, it, or, or for one, you know, full go, and you mm. saw what he could do with it. I mean, the 50 touchdown year was just absurd. So, it, it does kind of, yeah. If, if we're talking just... Let's drop the most talented wide receivers. Okay, well, Kellen Johnson's number mm-hmm. one. I mean, he can carry uh, Golden Tate over the mark is what I'm thinking. Yeah. But they just too many options. What maybe. about this? Let me ask you guys because you guys are the Bear fans. All right. Mar- Marshall and Jeffrey, when the careers are all said and done, when this tandem is finally done, Marshall's obviously going to retire before Jeffrey. Eventually. Where do they – where do you think they'll sit at the end of their career as – one of the top tandems because in our I'm thinking just our lifetime we've had Marvin Harrison Reggie Wayne Carter and Moss the greatest show on turf Jerry Rice and Terrell Owens Jerry Rice and you have John Taylor where are Jeffrey and Marshall gonna sit when it's all said and done if they uh, both continue to stay in Chicago and Cutler doesn't break something horribly I think they could end up as number one. I'll be honest, I, Jerry Rice is the all-time number one wide receiver, period. No way fans or butts. But I think that the combination of Marshall and Alshon and the ridiculous production and, honestly, the new rules for quarterbacks and wide receivers, how untouchable they are in most situations, their numbers are going to be much better. So I think they can walk away with the number one stats as a pair. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to agree on this one. I Maybe not the absolute number one, but they're going to be one of the greatest of all time, uh, especially in this era that we have with, just as Dave's saying, with quarterbacks being able to throw as much as they want, wide receivers not being allowed to be touched. They're going to put up ridiculous numbers, and I actually think the Bears are going to be in a cool situation, uh, especially, I'm assuming we're going to keep Alshon Jeffrey around. You know, Brandon Marshall. That is, I mean... You got Marshall's mm. contract. Well, you got Cutler's contract. I'm saying for Brandon Marshall, e- even if he stays as a bear for the rest of his career, maybe five years. You know, maybe five years before he decides to retire. Because Jeff- he's got more than that. Because Jeffrey is he the could, next contract, and he wants to. But I'll I think say. Jeffrey, you don't let that guy go. This guy's going to be a Chicago Bear for the rest of his career. He's the next contract, right? So then to come up um, to like we've got to sign him. I, I'm actually uh, you got, you got probably four. you probably have what two years left on his contract. But I think, um, and I'm not completely sure on that one, mm-hmm. but I think Alshon Jeffrey is going to be in a cool situation where he, I think he can be in two great duos. He'll two. be in Brandon Marshall's duo where he's number two, and he'll be the one where he's number one, and he, we have somebody else. But it will be with numbers. the Bears both times. I, I definitely think it will. Uh, different quarterback, different wide receiver next to him. But Wow. Yeah, I'd say the Bears really do have like that, that four-person of Forte, Cutler, Marshall, and Jeffrey, just if you keep paying these guys, the offense will stick. Um, wow, no, I, I'm I didn't even consider like going forward. Uh, Marshall, the end of his career is so far off to me. But when you look at his numbers and his production, year after year after year after year after year of thousand yard seasons, like that's all he puts up. Uh, he could walk away with some absolutely ridiculous numbers at the end of his career. Uh, Jeffrey, though, on the other hand, absolute blowout season. I really don't. I really am hoping he doesn't uh, go and slump, have some issues, anything. I'm just like, just please, just let him keep succeeding. Yeah. Because I, I think one of the, the the funniest things is when I first watched Jeffrey, uh, his even before he came in as a bear during his college days, his technique when he goes for the catch, how he just locks the arms. And hands and, and like perfect. It's like nope, not it is, moving. It's you see this right there. It is. It's it's so fun. But it's like it, you you watch guys try to rip his arms apart or swat. No, he is locked on. And the same thing happened when he transitioned to the NFL. Saw a little bit of it his rookie year. Unfortunately, due to injuries, he missed most of it. But I mean, those sideline catches, the end zone catches where he's like, mm-hmm. I throw the ball out of bounds. And never mind. Jeffrey just went up, grabbed it. Lock the arms down, and no, nobody's got to touch it. Well, yeah, I mean, we did see this in his 
because he had three years at South Carolina in his second year, 88 receptions, 1,500 yards, nine touchdowns and the for the thing, Gamecocks. The thing for uh, his college career, essentially, the only reason why he you know, wasn't a first-round draft pick was because of off-the-field things. So as long as like that stays out of his NFL career, but injuries let's be honest, as well. As far as he, he's pretty much been taken under Brian Marshall's wing, yeah, and, and Marshall is under Cutler, so it's like we've got a whole pyramid scheme here. As long as it doesn't collapse and they're all a great <laughs> exactly. family, just keep you everything know. happy, everything <laughs> staying good. But I mean, the thing is, Brandon Marshall, yeah, he might go somewhere else someday, only because of contract reasons. Um, you know, it's possible. I, I think he's going to stay in Chicago. I think he's very, very happy in Chicago. Until Jay leaves. Uh, Until which is Jay very leaves. possible. It really is. But I think Jay Cutler's next contract is going to be, or this contract is basically going to be the end of that his career. Cutler. Yeah. Let me ask you this. And I was looking this week, and I saw on it's NFLmocks.com of the Fansided Network, they had an article, Chicago Bears, five conditions for a Super Bowl run. And I bring this up, Mark, because I know you, you have some strong feelings about the people that always say, oh, oh, Bears Super Bowl this year. They say it every year. It's like the Cubs the next season, you know? They say it every year. I say it's a little bit more stronger. We say the Cubs only because we hope. The Bears, there's a little bit more seriousness behind it. Yeah, you're right. But here, a lot of it's There's actually a a chance. A lot of people who just want to be in on the team of like, oh, you know who's going to do it? The Bears. Like it's just it's one of those scenes where it's like it's not one of your first answers. Remember, remember how everyone was pumping up uh, the Cincinnati Bengals? Yeah, before I did last too. year, I thought they were going to go to the AFC Championship. On paper, game. it was like, wow, no, this is a legit team. But then they were like, oh wait, Andy Dalton's got to win in the playoffs. And yeah, that happened. <laughs> and then you lose to the Texans. But Yet not again, this past year, unfortunately. we talk about wide receiver tandems. Then you look at Cincinnati, and they have AJ Green, and then and who AJ else? Green. AJ Green. AJ Green so get that him. That was Gruden's offense. Get is AJ Green. Get so. him a number two wide receiver, and maybe the Bengals can do something. Or or a quarterback who can perform in the playoffs. You know, either or. But maybe here, uh, Tony Romo. But here are NFL mocks: five conditions for a Bears Super Bowl run. You guys ready? Bring it. Number one: keeping Jay Cutler healthy late in the season. Any time in the season. Yeah, this one should have a giant <laughs> duh next to it. I will say one thing for this, though. I saw another article that was similar to this, but mm-hmm. it was uh, more about the depth that the Bears have. And it's basically saying that the Bears, all they need to get you know that long super or that late Super Bowl run is a backup that can win half the games. Like, he can go two So, like, Luke two. McCown kind of did? Yeah, which is, like, win two, lose two, that's fine. Because you guys won the, the game against the Cowboys that he played, right? Uh, well, he was, he was 50%. McCown, I believe, he was 50%. Was he? I, I believe so. I mean, I, I might be wrong on that. He might have been like two and three or something. Mm-hmm. I don't remember if he played four or five games. Number two, defense ranking in the top 12. Yeah, I, I agree with that one, and I honestly don't think it'll be that much of a stretch. Last year, there was such uh, an unknown factor with, okay, well, we let Erlacher walk. We've got some young guys. We brought in DJ to try to sure up with a veteran presence, but then he goes down with the injury. So left with Bostic out there. He just looked uncomfortable. He wasn't quite reading the the audibles. He wasn't reading the offense. He looked lost. Our defense, and I think that sums up our defense is lost because the middle of that line was just devastated by injuries. Secondary Tillman was playing on like four injuries at one time. So we went out this offseason, spent everything to just go out and be like, yeah, no, we now have a ridiculous defensive line. Our linebacking core is going to get better. Our corners and secondary safeties, minus Chris Conti, are going to get better. I, I'm really happy about Trustman's just flip of a switch. I'm going to fix this this year, and he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is one thing for uh, Coach Trustman. I think uh, the best thing about him is he does exactly that. There was an issue last year. I'm going to pinpoint an issue, and I'm going to fix it, and it's fine. We're going to go get five defensive linemen. Yeah. And I'm looking right, right here. Mm-hmm. On it's footballoutsiders.com. They have the 2013 defensive efficiency ratings. According to them, Bears are 25th in the league. If you had a running back or a backup running back or a backup backup running back, we were in danger. If somebody was able to move the ball forward with their feet, 
there's an issue. But I think, it, and that's the thing too, <laughs> it took a little bit of time like for people to realize, oh, wait, we can just run the ball? <laughs> oh. It doesn't matter right. who's back there. And I mean just... the top five most efficient defenses according to Football Outsiders. Number one was Seattle. Yep. Followed by Arizona. Of yeah. Course. Carolina. Yeah. Buffalo and Cincinnati. Well, I don't know about Buffalo, but all right. Buffalo, yeah, I'll be honest. The, le- a bit of a the least yeah. two efficient off are efficient defenses. San Diego at 32. Yeah. I, I, Green Bay at 31. Yeah. Yeah. As I say, Green Bay also suffered with some mad amount of injuries last year. Not to say that they have a good defense. On both but, sides of the ball, yeah. too. But I feel like for the Bears, there should be a Chris Conti rule. If you have him on the team, you go all the way to last in efficiency, right? No, no, no. You can't <laughs> drag everybody down with him. Or is he that tries. Why, or is that why the Bears were only at twenty five efficiency? <laughs> hey, he's because still, of Chris he's still Conti. a starter, so <laughs> yep. Until number th- somebody number three on the list. We've talked about um all podcast. Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey play like stars. Play like their regular selves. Yeah. Play average <laughs> Marshall and Jeffrey level. Alshon Jeffrey decides to only use one hand to catch balls now. Number Numbers f- drop to a thousand yards a season. Number four is an interesting one because I feel like it kind of uh, throws some salt in the wounds from last year. Keep Green Bay out of the playoffs. That honestly, it's a challenging thing because we only play it twice, but our division is extremely competitive. Uh, every year, any of our teams in the NFC North could take a shot to the playoffs. So well, not, not just all, yeah, not just that. I'm thinking of Bay is the only one. You guys as Bear fans. You might have a better knowledge than me. Think about your last few playoff games against the Packers. Playoff games. One of them sticks out to me, but you know, well, point I mean, number one was in that. I mean, are we are you counting last year's Week 17 as a playoff no, no, game? no playoff? I'm talking was in a the play playoffs. Into a playoff. Yeah, I, well, I mean, to me, it's just in times where we have to beat the Packers, we typically don't beat the Packers. We're choke. We yeah. just choke hard. You know, and there, you could, you know, use whatever excuse you want on it. But the fact is, the Chicago Bears just don't get it done. For the love of God, why didn't anyone pick up that ball? <laughs> well, you know. It, it was just sitting there. <laughs> but, yeah, I think, <laughs> you, I, I think I would expand it beyond the Packers, though. Don't let anybody else in your division get in yeah. if you can control it. So you're saying you the really Bears? Can't, but. So don't let Vikings, Packers, or Lions get a wild card. I mean, Vikings are are a, I'm a little less worried no, about. No, but no, we still no, lost I know, to I know. the Vikings last year. You know, we still be honest, lost the Vikings made the playoffs a couple years ago yeah. with uh, Ponder just just rolling. Uh, and in by you know, Ponder, 2000 I mean. you mean AP? Yeah, but, yeah. I, I guess they had a running back too, but I mean, Ponder really just brought that team together. Oh yeah, yeah. he's like a glue. Hey, it was He's a good, you know. He claps his hands and people get stuff done, but I think, even, like you know, the uh, the Detroit Lions are always tough for the Bears, Packers are always tough for the Bears. You don't want to see either one of those two teams. It's ridiculous wants offense in the NFC North. That's yeah. all I'm saying. It's just offense, offense, offense. We stole a little bit of Detroit's defense this past season. We stole Minnesota's defense this past season. So I feel like we're going in the right direction. But I mean, those are teams right there that like. Obviously, you play them twice a year. They know or at least have oh, some yeah. sort of idea how to stop that offense. You're much better playing, you know, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say the Saints, which you don't mm-hmm. see very often, who might not have the experience stopping Forte, Jeffrey, and Marshall. Right. You can throw a different array of things at them, and they won't be expecting it. Because that's exactly the reason why the Bears can never beat the Packers is the Packers shut down the offense. And then the defense can't stop Aaron Rodgers because you can't stop Aaron Rodgers. He is, like, the best quarterback in the NFL. It's kind of tough. I mean, he's in that top three range of Brady, Manning, and him. And for point number five, let's say the Bears get into the playoffs. No other team from the NFC North is in. You're sitting there going, oh, we might be, we might be actually able to do this. Last point, number five, play well against the San Francisco 49ers because this is what I'm thinking. Got to play them on Sunday Night Football Week 2. But I will call it right now. If the Bears, if the Bears make the NFC Championship game, no matter if San Francisco wins just the division or wins the conference, that NFC title game is going to be in San Fran. The Bears are not playing really? San Fran the in the playoffs. In San Francisco, too. That's next year. It's in Arizona this year. Oh, man. I'm, I was going to say, you, really think, you think uh, 49ers are going to— 49ers gonna... are going to be better than the Bears. I don't think so. I think strength of schedule, uh, that division, gets a little bit little bit tougher. So I think the Bears, like we said, I think they can run out ahead 
of everybody else in the AFC North this so year. You're say, let's put it this way. Let's say I think San Fran. Number two. So you're saying San Fran's going to get the wild card? I do. I think San Fran's going to wild card it. Um, but no, our matchup versus them, again, the only thing is, well, they've got a stable running backs. I don't even know who's going to come out, but I'm afraid of about all of them. I just I feel like if the Bears meet San Fran in the playoffs, it's going to be at the new candlestick, I'll say. I don't know if they're calling it candlestick, but it, the new candlestick, whatever new stadium they have. I, I just think, for me, I don't 100% get the concern about San Francisco. There's better teams in the NFC to worry about. Well, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe the world champions, I, the, the guys who no, beat no, no, the crap no. out of San I Francisco. Feel, I feel like the everybody, the term, but yeah. everybody this season is high on San Fran because— they're, people feel like they're going to come into this season much like the Spurs did in the NBA this last season with a chip on their shoulder like, you know what? We should have been in the Super Bowl. We should have won. And they're going to have this diamond, the have yeah, this diamond cutter year, edge. The Spurs yeah, but now it's happened twice. They've lost in the Super Bowl. If they've almost gotten there. They're going to come in diamond cut they're edge be like, and just uh, slice. Colin Kaepernick is like the Peyton Manning of the early 2000s. Yeah. Close but no cigar. I, I think for me, um, Colin Kaepernick surprised the, the weak Chicago Bears defense two years ago. <laughs> uh, but I don't really see the big the big issue there. These two teams line up very well together. I think Chicago Bears defense obviously is a little weaker than uh, the 49ers defense. But the Chicago Bears offense has more firepower. The, it's just that San Francisco has Colin the Kaepernick. The biggest thing that the Bears are going to have to overcome in the Week 2 matchup is... The emotions and not their emotions. That's the first game that San Fran's playing and that's a in the new game stadium, too, right? Sunday night, yeah. baby. So you're going to get a primetime game. San Fran fans are going to f- be feeling it. And the Chicago players, Bears are usually the players are going to be time, so. the players yeah. are going to be like, "Oh, this is the first time we're playing in the stadium. It could be a route." I will say one thing about that game. I think that might just be a game where after that one, ESPN and all all the media is saying. Are the Bears really something we need yeah, to Yeah, I was say, this about? is really the, the early season measuring stick for the Bears. It's like, mm-hmm. how well have we improved our defense? Yeah, because that game's going to be either they really dominated or really impressed against the 49ers, or it's going to be the 49ers. If the, beat if them. the honestly, Bears lose that game, is it going to be like, Mark, like you mentioned ESPN, is that going to be the, you know what, maybe the Bears weren't our Super Bowl pick. No. Depends how badly the I think week is two is really... I mean, it's early, early, but... You know, well, you know the, me- that, yeah, the media and, loves yeah. to talk yeah. about stuff. No, I, I expect it to go full shootout mode. I'm expecting like uh, a 35 to 41, 42 game. But here. in that case, I think that's more of a game on San Francisco's side to prove that, hey, there's somebody besides Crabtree out there because Anquan Bolden wasn't that valuable to that offense last Early season. in the season, he was. He was like, wow, this guy's just catching everything, but he did kind of fade out. Yeah, so I mean, I think for San Francisco, they got to – have something there. Well, you know, Vernon Davis would just show up already. You know, <laughs> he's just holding out still. He wants more money. I'm going to add, actually, to go off of what you said, Mark, mm. I'm adding a six point to this list. Oh, man. Win your primetime games. Because, oh, yeah. you, Sorry, yeah. because you have at San Fran, at New York Gi- or New York Jets. That Jets at, game's going to get bumped. At Green Bay, and then... At home against Dallas, home against New Orleans. Those are your primetime games. Honestly, the, the, the you Green have Bay to win and the uh, 49ers are the scarier, too. I think uh, Dallas and the Saints, the Saints usually game, show up pretty well. The yeah. Saints are, I feel like Green Bay, San Fran, that's going to be the top. The Saints is that middle ground of it could be a hard match. It could be like an easy win. Oh. And then no, you have Dallas, and, no. I mean, Dallas the Bear, and New York. The Bears and the Saints match up very well against each other. Uh that's always a good game for just kind of when it comes to a close game where you're against a good team, how is this team going to show up? That's what those Saints games are. Because we've played the Saints quite a bit yeah, in the we past do. few years. Last year in Tressman's first year, you guys lost 26-18. to 18. Yeah. yeah. It's a tough one. And uh, what happened at the end of that season, not very much to be excited about. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's that's the game. I mean, the San Francisco game I'm definitely looking forward to. But that Saints game late on in the season, I'm looking forward to. Oh, yeah, Dave, you point to Dallas. I'm not saying that you guys can't beat Dallas. I love, I love watching Dallas, though. I think it's awesome because Romo is almost the, the um, exact same as Cutler, except he puts a smile on his face instead of a frown. <laughs> and but... he dates Jessica Simpson. 
Well, he did that too. Yeah, I didn't. Like but you, though. no, it's it's a, a gunsling quarterback with one of the top wide receivers in the league coming up. Uh, he does have a tight end who's very good, but I mean, I I just love the quarterback comparison between him and Cutler. Well, and I mean, we we're talking about San Fran, who they got to play week one, Dallas. Yep, at Jerry World. Yeah, I'm not. Ex- I mean. I'm not really looking for uh, much out of Dallas this year. I'm really not. I know Tony Apparently, Romo. Apparently Tony Romo said yeah, a thing. He said Tony Romo <laughs> claims that these next three years are going to be the best of his career. And for his sake, I hope so because he hasn't won a Super Bowl yet. They're so. not going to. He Did said, he say statistically best? Because, yeah, uh, that could he's work. He's just saying it's his best. It's going to be the best three years of his career. Uh, I we'll can't see. possibly see it unless Jerry Jones uh, suddenly decides, you know what? This football thing's kind of boring. I think I'm going to be done for a while. <laughs> or if. You have Des Bryant and Terrence Williams decide, you know what? Move over, Marshall and Jeffrey. We're the real wide receiver tandem. Unless that happens, I, I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I, I think there's more uh, that, that the Dallas Cowboys got to worry about than that. But last thing that I'm going to leave it at. We've talked about the Bears, their ramifications for a Super Bowl run. As Bear fans, chances that your team can win the Super Bowl. Um, win a Super Bowl, I, I don't see it happening this year. Get uh, to the Super Bowl, either or. Get to the Super Bowl, I don't know, I'll give it a quarter. I'll give it, a, I'll put it at 25 25? I, I mean, I'm just not that, con- I mean, we got so many new p- uh, pieces to this defense that it needs to gel a little bit. Uh, I mean, next year, sure, we got better chances, I'm guessing. I think that the Bears are definitely a playoff team. I think they're a team that can make noise. NFC North champion? Maybe, maybe. Depends on if you can beat Green Bay, right? It, it depends how Green Bay's looking. Is Green Bay going to be healthy this year? And uh, it, when they do, you know, if they do get hurt, are they going to still be standing in there? Sorry, is Eddie Lacy just going to carry that team on his back? Yeah, if it's oh, he, he's a phenomenal athlete. But no, I, I'd give it like twenty percent. I'm even. It, it, I'm more positive than you, but I'm picking a lower number. And somehow that makes sense in my head. Um, I think that. Honestly, it was like we fixed the offense one season, we fixed the defense. I think, like you said, we're one year off. We're going to add whatever cherry to the top uh, after this year that pushes us over the edge. I think we're definitely going to the NFC Championship. Uh, but at that point, it's, it's a big old question mark for me. Yeah, 50%. I, I think the, the biggest issue... Wait, wait, wait. To get there. 50. So so the Vikings fan, the Vikings fanboy is saying He's most confident 50%. 50 And the reason why is, Mark, what did you say? What did you say was I'd the big question quite a mark? Bit of things. What was the question mark for the team? Offense Depth or defense? Is what I, oh, well, the question mark is defense. The offense is going to be fine. That other 50% is the defense. The defense I mean, can do fine. Bears will be there. That goes into my point of just the biggest issue for the Bears is that depth. It, I mean, when it comes down to injuries, it's, it's going to start to fall apart. I mean, it's more than color. That defense has some depth uh, problems as well. There's yeah. no depth to the secondary. The way, and this is me as that's, an outsider, scary, the true. thing I see yeah. about the Bears. I see Alshon earlier this month saying how, yeah, me and Marshall, best wide receiver tandem. You In have all time. You have Brandon Marshall calling out Roddy White and Julio Jones. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, and maybe it's more of the kind of confidence that he has now on ESPN, but Randy Moss, Chris Carter. They believe they were the best. Yeah, I they think, proved it. I yeah, think that were, Marshall so. and Jeffrey, their confidence, Forte's confidence that he's – the best back in the league that he thinks he's the best back is going to carry the Bears, and if the defense can just just get by, 50% chance they're in the Super Bowl. And it's funny, too, because you talk about other guys saying they're the best. Forte multiple times in the offseason said he's the best. And, yeah. and it's, just, it's one of those things where he gets um, overshadowed. What, what happened when guys like Eli Manning and Joe Flacco said they're elite, they're the best? They, they, they well, won they Super Bowls. Up. Yeah. I was going to say, um, the one thing to think, though, is... It, you know what's weird? We we kept hearing, oh, all these, I'm the best cornerback, and that blew up to a whole big thing. Why does she, nobody's really questioning them. There, there's no real argument there, ESPN. Well, it goes on yeah. to what you mentioned last week, Dave. Cornerbacks are the new divas. Yeah, it's just kind of bizarre because it's always been like, well, you calling out yourself as the best, who's going to challenge it? And then it's like, oh, argument here, argument there on Twitter, or whatever it may be. Wide receiver comes out and like, nah, we're the best. Everybody's like, now nah, we're not questioning that one. Yep. They're legit. 
I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna call it career years for Jeffrey Marshall this year. I don't think so. I think I think uh, career years probably about 1,200 pop each. Uh, it'll be closer. Uh, but honestly, I- I'm afraid of Cutler. He his his lack of playing an entire season scares the heck out of me. So I'm not super confident. Yeah. I, I mean, I, it's definitely something to be nervous about. I'm still uh, being an optimist on Shea Cutler. I probably always will be. Say, so do you <laughs> over under uh, 12 games? Over. I'm going to say over. Uh, if you put it uh, at 14, I maybe wouldn't say under. I mean, 12 games is pretty much right what you expect for Jay Cutler. I was going to say, that is the Jay Cutler number. Uh, I, I just feel like one of these years he's got to be out there every single game. Right? Got to happen. Eh, we can hope. And that'll be the year they win the Super Bowl. Let's so, put it this way. That, that would be. If, if you, he's out there all, all the games. You yeah. know what? I'm going to go out on a limb here on the podcast. In wow. Our, wow. In, first, yeah. first, you brought some breaking news that Matt Forte <laughs> is better than Ellington. What do you have for us now, okay. Ricky? In our, in our hockey stuff, I made a bet and said that I'd wear a King shirt if the Kings won, right? Yeah. If Jay Cutler plays it doesn't play every game this season. I wear a Jay Cutler shirt. Deal. So you think he's gonna play? He's gonna every play game. every single game. Shirt. You gonna wear a Jay Cutler shirt? I'll wear a Jay Cutler shirt. All right. Absolute deal. All and right. just to make it more interesting, if uh, if Teddy Bridgewater can get uh, two wide receivers over a thousand, I'll buy a jersey. You'll buy a Teddy Bridgewater yep, jersey this season. Well, yours is safer of not happening than mine. I know it is. But I'm gonna Teddy say Bridgewater ain't I'm gonna saying throw for two Cutler. Pounds. Starts every game this season for the Bears. Bold move. Fifty, and I'm not saying they're going to make the Super Bowl. I'm saying fifty percent chance, depending on the defense. We'll have to wait and see. So bold prediction, Cotton. See if it pays off. <laughs> yep. That's going to do it for the onside kick. You guys tell us what you think. Is Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey the best tandem in the in the wide receiver world? What do you think of the Bears and their Super Bowl chances? And who do you think could make a Super Bowl run in 2014? This has been the onside kick. Thank you for listening. Have a good day, everybody.